Support Your Life Living, a podcast about the life of a 20-something, the fuck-ups and learnings and real-life inspiration, how you and I can make the very most out of our 20s. Hello and welcome to another episode. My name is Olivia. I'm just a regular 20-something who wants to grow on a personal level and of course take you along the way. I invite inspiring guests to help us to make the very most out of our 20s and today I've invited Alisa Eresina. We met at one of her workshops on mastering doubt and fear and it was an absolute game changer for me. I loved it and instantly knew I wanted to have her on the podcast. Uh, she's an empowerment coach, yoga and meditation teacher, entrepreneur, facilitator, podcaster and speaker. She's also the founder of FemFlow, which aims to help women to harness the power of their female cycle and to live a vibrant life. And she's the head of strategy and experience at The Female Factor, a leading community for ambitious women, which is where we met. She loves to shine light on important taboo topics in our society and speaks openly about female empowerment, leadership, the power of the female cycle in our everyday life, work, and business. Listen into this episode to hear me talking to Lisa about her journey on battling through depression and anxiety in her teens and early 20s, strategies on how you and I can overcome fear and doubt, why sexuality is actually linked to personal growth and how you can connect to your female cycle and stop using period products which was amazing to find out throughout this episode so i hope you enjoy listening guys Um, at the end we have a very special goodie for you so definitely hang on until the end and hop on over to instagram under at quartz life living podcast share your thoughts on this episode and enjoy listening. Alisa, thank you so much for coming on the Course Life Living podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here and to chat with you today. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, Basically, we've met at several events, but I think the most predominant event was a workshop you hosted about fear and doubt. Mm. And um, basically, it was a bit of a life changer or a game changer in, in my whole personal growth journey I would say but we'll get (laughs) more into that stuff later but before we get into the deep stuff can you just tell us what you're up to at the moment who you are and what does a day in your life look like yeah I'm originally born in Russia I lived there until I was eight years old then I moved to Slovakia with my entire family went to an American school then moved to Austria Basically, until my 20s, I was um, faced with a lot of different challenges, depression, struggles. We're probably going to dive into that more in depth. Then I followed kind of the idea of how to live a good life and had um, different jobs. So I worked like small student jobs, but also in Pico Globe, more a salesperson and um, started studying first biology, then applied for an art school, didn't get it. I felt an, again into a big uh, depressive mode and then had a huge, uh, um, how, how to say, um, moment of restructuring of my life. Um, started at the VU, I finished there the Bachelor in Business and um, yeah, started to exploring. I worked for a couple of years in a student organization um, where I basically everything what I learned comes from there. Um, partially to that, I tried to explore myself with classical therapy, but also went to Southeast Asia, where I went to yoga, meditation, um, did my training there, um, meditated with the monks. I explored psychedelics in jungles um, of um, Costa Rica. And um, yeah, part of that started my coaching journey, uh, my profession, what I'm doing right now. So I'm a female empowerment and transformation coach. I work with people at one-on-one or workshop setting, as you beautifully mentioned already before. And um, um, since a couple of months, um, I am specifically also into the female factor. So I'm working in a core team and responsible for developing awesome kick experiences for women. 
and having also my podcast has started with my partner and totally into elevating human consciousness and empowering more women on their path wow <laughs> you've done so much and thank I'm, you <laughs> I'm, I'm so so excited to talk about everything you've basically tried out and done and and w how you've ended up where you are today do you have any morning in the oh evening? yeah i do but i have to be quite um honest also the last couple um two months i was rather almost to zero um so um i had morning routines where i had two hours um evening routines um uh, and what i do focus right now is more not on what but more on the how um, but I generally want to give you some things that I never skip. And um, this is something that I do on a yearly basis. So every December I have a one year, month reflection where I'm looking into the past year. So my belief systems and things, failures, successes, um, people who really touched me in many different ways or supported me um, and plan my next year to create my vision um, outlook for the next year. And um, yeah, so that's one big part of that then what I do, I try to move my body with yoga or dancing and I try to connect more to my emotional reaction. Also actually coming to here, that's another thing that I do. I have some tracks which uh, I condition myself to feel in a certain way or to bring my vibe in a certain way. So for example, before coming here, I listen to the beautiful uh, music which totally reminds me of gratefulness mm -hmm. and to connect to the present moment. So I work a lot of with this, um, this aspect, yeah. So you take a whole month every year to reflect on where you're at and where you want to go. Wow. Yeah, I think um, a friend inspired me a couple of years ago, um, posted on Facebook, he's doing a real reflection. So there was a template and I just follow it. And it literally changed totally the way how I start my year, how I consciously plan the things that I want to achieve. And I'm not speaking about concrete business plans, but basically who I want to become as a human being. And I adapted the system. I actually started working with that with my um, coaching clients because it had such a profound experience on me. So it's really about, um, you know, some couple of days it's with my partner. Um, we're sitting there drinking wine, chilling with candlelight. Sometimes it's just um, one part of that is, for example, collect pictures or memories, which really were important to me over the last year. So it takes some time to reflect. And another section is um, writing to these people who touched my life and actually saying thank you for what they have done or who they are. And I really like to take conscious time for that because I think that what I mean, why, what else would you want to do in, in December apart from <laughs> enjoying tea and cuddles and this beautiful reflection? And eating a lot. And eating a lot, <laughs> exactly, yeah. A lot of Christmas cookies. Um, I love that idea. And I've, I've been actually thinking about something similar. Um, we just watched Bill Gates' documentary and he used to take out like weeks, think weeks as well. Um, which is super interesting just to take a step back and 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 reflect and i think that's yeah so so important um let's talk about success because i know you mentioned before we started this podcast that or you even mentioned it in the intro that you actually went quite a normal classical path like talking to you now i would never have thought you did the view even though i went to the view and i felt like an outsider there which is a business school and now you're doing like femflow workshops and doing something uh, I think very different um what was success for you back then and how did it change now yeah so I think quite a topic that every one of us has in our mind during our life and probably also going to ask this question a couple of times throughout our life so basically when I was around um 17 16 like approaching my 20s i was in a very dark place so i literally felt very suicidal very in doubt um, being an immigrant myself not feeling comfortable and at some points um i really uh, took a decision i remember that quite specifically that i did not want to live that anymore like this so in this desperation, in this constant um, frustration, this constant dark place, uh, constantly sabotaging myself. And I looked around kind of, I mean, like metaphorically speaking, and tried to figure out like, I mean, what is a happy, successful life? 
And the picture that was presented to me where I felt like, you know, okay, so you get a flat, you have a relationship, um, you need a quite good education or job, and you go and party with your friends on the weekends. So that was kind of my compass of what success or a normal functioning human being in society is coming back like from where I was in my um, younger years. So I started kind of following the path and not completely like, you know, crazy radically, but I applied for university. I was out on the weekends. I had a, a partner. We moved in in a flat, a course in the ninth district, actually close to the old view. And um, yeah, I had my side jobs. I got, made money um, and uh, was set up basically for, for this path. And at some certain point then, I think maybe around 21, basically I had many moments, again, uh, reflecting back to me, but my relationship, when I looked at it, it was um, quite tough. We both came from a family background where we hoped uh, that the other one will save us, which probably everyone knows will never work out. And it was um, just based on a lot of fear and doubt and frustration and just, you know, not trust. So we broke up. He went to France. I was there with the flat. I didn't know if we should continue. Basically, I had some debts that I could not pay off because most of my income went to um, alcohol on the weekends. The friends I was spending time with, they were very superficial friendships. That's how I thought it is. Like you meet up, you talk about your update, basically each other, what happened last week and just uh, went unconscious like in on the weekends. And um, I um, also experienced like weight loss. I really hated my body. I didn't um, feel comfortable in my skin. So it was really kind of a wake up call. And it felt like, you know, I made this decision at 17 to change my life. And life is throwing me back the shit. Like I'm doing everything with society is telling me that I need to do in order to become this cool, super sexy, happy human being. And it doesn't work out. So first what happened is I dropped back into old patterns um, heavy drinking, sabotaging myself, hurting myself, um, really um, dissociating from from reality. And then after some time, I was again kind of um, build up realization and that's I'm looking for in the wrong place for happiness or for success. And it was not found outside, attached to something, material stuff or just generally ideas or concepts that we create as a society but rather I need to start looking inside. And again, it felt like a fresh new start. So I started um, I uh, started to be more involved in this organization. I was talking about volunteering, helping other um, young people to be empowered. And I had no clue what I was doing, quite honestly. I just know, knew I need to find some answers. Then I met my partner, which for me was um, quite a scary thing after um, having a a traumatizing relationship to actually trust somebody else and go into that. Um, um, then I started to read a lot of psychology, spirituality, philosophy, um, and then, yeah, just traveled to the places and um, specifically the, the concept of mindfulness and meditation helped me to look more closer. And bits by bits with these experiences, and again, I'm still learning and continuing to learn and to discover this stuff, but basically the definition changed of happiness and success rather from the outside coming more um, inside. And it's for me, it's found in every moment and everything and in everyone. You don't need to be somewhere or be something or someone. Mm -hmm. It's available to you literally right now. At what point, because um, you already briefly mentioned your early 20s, um, maybe you can take me back to that stage because I know that many listeners and people out there are probably in a similar situation that they there's not just one area of their life wrong there's so many different areas like a relationship or lack thereof job isn't working out whatever at what point did you realize I can't go on like this and also what helped you what was the first kind of step towards coming out of that it's hard to really pinpoint it to one event. And maybe sometimes we have these um, events which are shaking us up, like, you know, near um, near death experiences, which can be very emotionally charged that help us to readjust a bit our path. But for me, um, so I, I started trying many things, basically. 
um, I, I tried a different sort of therapy until it didn't work anymore. And um, then I started uh, to get men mentors. That was a very helpful part. So for my professional stuff, but also I tried to look actively for role models. I started reading and seeing what other people recommend. And one big chunk for me, so before I go to that, I think it's important to see like, you know, the many steps that you can do. And I started to get frustrated when you're using a tool and it's not working anymore. And then you're like, why not? But what we do not understand or what that do not understand immediately back then is that, you know, you're coming to a situation point. Like, again, the tool has used itself, if you will. And then you need to look deeper or to change with your strategy and keep on moving. So without getting frustrated, okay, but I tried my morning journal, like, you know, it doesn't work. Or I tried to speak with other, it doesn't work. I'm doing the breathing exercise, it doesn't work. Well, yes, continue and detach a bit from the outcome. And so many things helped me to get there. But the main, I think, part was, um, I think, which is a huge amplifier. And I really believe in that is that redefining a bit relationships around me. So I started to really be way more conscious with who I want to surround myself with. And there is this even saying like, you know, that the closest five people around you kind of determine who you are as a human being. So that's uh, maybe an invitation for everyone who's listening just to think, who do you spend most time with? And what are the values? What's the what's the uh, self-talk these people are having? What's the ambition, the vision, uh, the authenticity around these people? Because it's a beautiful reflection to yourself. So I started to get more surrounded with people who inspired me, who I felt are um, smarter than me, more more connected to themselves, like on their path, and um, developed just uh, try to develop more conversations which are not based on. Um, again, fear, not knowing what to say or continuing this bullshit small talk that we have, but really asking the questions um, that are difficult or opening my heart and sharing actually my story. Because before, quite honestly speaking, the first time I spoke about what's going on within, within me was 70 at my, with my first therapist. And then the next times was somewhere around 21 with another closer person to me. Like even with my partner back then, I would told you, which we broke up with. Um, which led to another uh, breakdown. I did not speak from my heart. I spoke from my ego, from my mind, from the shallow BS, but not there. So step by step, opening up, trusting and really investing in others. Also, you know, if somebody needs support, you're there. If somebody needs uh, uh, being challenged, this is the role that you're having. If somebody uh, wants to, to, is going from a, a hard time, you're there. So there are many things how we can redefine how we um, built our relationships and now it's a life priority and i just i don't know i don't i don't even remember how it was before it, it seems like a so far different story back then yeah um you already briefly mentioned that you actually went to therapy and you struggled with depression and it's something that i i wouldn't say i fully understand and i'm currently trying to understand more of and I think there's on the one hand maybe people going through a hard time and a quarter life crisis but on the on other hand maybe people who are actually past a point and going through such a hard time that they need to get help um, at what point did you realize that and how did therapy affect your development I'm not sure if I'm a good advocate for classical therapy because that's the reason why I went to uh, look for other like mm -hmm. philosophies. Uh, but then to answer in generally, I mean, like that helped me to open up to a different human being. And I think speaking only from my personal experience, it doesn't mean that it applies to anyone else who's listening or to anyone who is um, in this phase of their lives. But I always felt um, not being really seen somehow so i felt like you have this list with the therapist at least that I was working with that it felt very mechanically and it felt um, very soul connecting so i felt always like again it might be a total projection from my side that i could not build the trust but it felt like you know this one tools and after another which coming and plus the first one that i had was um prescribed me quite heavy uh, medication mm -hmm which totally knocked me out and disconnected me even more from my emotions. Mm -hmm. So um, I will, because I knew that was the only way, 
I started always to look for a therapist and go there, but then I had this, you know, was not motivated to continue. Then I remember I was standing a couple of times in front of the Akaha, uh, wanting to go to this group uh, therapy thing or at least ask and get for help because I searched on the internet, but I never passed the line of going in there. So I really can connect how hard it is to get help or support. For me, what helped a lot was generally, um, and I think we're now living in an age where so many tools are available on the internet out there. You don't need a lot of resources or money just to open self, yourself up to the knowledge uh, which is out there. Um, I think one of the most powerful tools that really helped me was, especially during my first silent meditation retreat, where I could couple. So basically to give an introduction, how it works, you get rid of all your stuff. You were there um, for, I was, the first one I think was seven or 10 days, not sure. Um, you were there in complete silence. So there is no body communication, no eye communication, no talking, no doing, um, no vipassana clocks. Is what, uh, it was anapanasati, which is a form of vipassana. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite close, but it's about mindfulness of the breath. Mm -hmm. But from the design, it's quite similar. Uh, where 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 is the method is a bit differently, how to get, how to, get to the same po point. And after three days, um, I had basically, you can imagine, only two yoga pants. I mean, like, what else would I have in Thailand? And I, my mind was really racing which yoga pant am I wearing. But obviously, the one that I'm wearing right now, I will wear the other one later. But still, I tried to find anything to get distracted. And after the third day, it was kind of like a realization, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> like, what is it happening? It was really like, how, like this mind like which is racing and basically telling you all the stories that you are not enough that you're not good that you're worthless that people don't like you that you're not not worth living like that's the same tool basically like you know that you need to understand how to work with consciously because it can either really elevate you and you can use it and it's a superior tool honestly but on the other hand if you're not mastering it's like Eckhart Tolle so beautifully says, the tool is becoming the ruler, so it is mastering you. So meditation helped me really to see this distinction between what I consider myself as being me and the mind which is racing the thoughts and that actually have an influence on what's going in in my mind. And that gave me a lot of space to breathe. It gave me, it took some time to really integrate it more in my daily practice. It took some time to really make it a normal as we were speaking about the, the habits uh, in, in the beginning, mm. the how, like how I drink coffee, how I drink tea, how I speak, how I connect with myself. It took some time, but it has been one of the most powerful tools, I would say, to really understanding my mind and my design. Yeah. Awesome. And at what stage did you start looking at your fears, maybe perhaps, or at what stage did you come in contact with with this whole topic of fear and doubt? Mm. I think it came like an onion. So every time when you approach one fear, um, another fear was underneath. So I, um, for me, like one of the biggest fears was just generally to open up and talk about that, say out loud that I'm not feeling good because I felt literally, especially in young 20s, um, that no one else is going to feel this way. And when the first time you speak up, like really coming from your heart, you realize, wow, like other people are feeling exact the same way. And you start connecting and you see such a relief, not in the commonality of suffering, but because you understand that this is a human experience and then you can share this and learn from each other and support each other. And it took, like, honestly, I remember the first time um, um, as a moderator or speaker at a conference when I shared just bits of my story, like, uh, my team was shocked, uh, my, uh, the people were there were shocked, because, as you said, like, if you look at me at our certain projection, a certain version of myself right now, you don't really necessarily connect it to other things. And also very common uh, with depression or anxiety, you see people, like, you know, rocking as in our workshop, kicking ass and being awesome entrepreneurs, so, etc., but it's only one version or one picture, one frame of what you can see. So if you allow it to open up, you can connect to also different paths. And um, yeah, I just also my reflection has become a really big part of it. Like, what am I fearing? And a certain level, I think that was something maybe around 2066, if I'm not like... Don't take me for, for, for the numbers, but I started to, I heard this concept about conscious fear project. So really trying to develop a, a project around your fears. And one of my big fears was actually uh, being on water. So I, 
connected it, if I reflect deeper on that, it was um, fear of losing control. So because again, in my youth, I was totally out of control on one side of the pendulum. So I gained a lot of mechanisms to gain control in all areas of my life, which swung back to another um, uh, side of the pendulum. So I realized this being in, in water and, and swimming in the sea caused really, really um, stress moments. And that was not like this when I was younger as a kid. I grew up swimming in the sea when we uh, were in, we partially lived in Cyprus when my father was working in between. So I started first saying, okay, you know, one thing, one year I was diving with my partner in Philippines with whale sharks. They eat only plants. We're snorkeling next, not diving, snorkeling next to him. I had almost a heart attack. My boobs were out. The Philippine guy could not really <laughs> tell that I should put back my bikini, but I survived. That was awesome. Next year, I went to an open, open dive, um, diving license with my sister on Indonesia. Wow, that was poo, quite a challenge being underwater, even like, you know, making one mistake. Next year after I went for free diving where you dive with one breath. And that was, for me was crazy experience because again, very um, beautiful, profound experience to realize again, the storytelling machine and the mind and how easy you can switch from the one stirring you can't to you can actually. And it's literally like this. So yeah. This is something definitely which I'm still on doing. I feel more the fear is like a compass for me where my biggest growth potential is. So that's what I'm trying to use it for. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm learning that as well. I think one of the most profound and beautiful things in your workshop was I think sometimes we can imagine that other people are going through similar things, but really on that day you could see that it, no matter how put together any person in that room looked every single one of those people had fears and we almost all of us shared the same fears and doubts am I good enough am I perfect enough all this the same thing so I think one of the most profound things that I want to share on this podcast as well is the fact that you're not the only one going through this and everyone has these fears and doubts no matter how successful that person or put together that person looks from the outside and um, yeah just judging by your story of, of going diving because that was your fear um, at what stages in your life can you maybe give some more examples where you you said okay this is a fear I have to go there and what was kind of the outcome of going through that fear or would you recommend is that something you recommend your clients to do and how do you learn that I guess mm -hmm. um, so probably there are tons of examples one important concept that helped me to navigate a bit more consciously this thing was from my tantra teacher and basically it's really understanding first like putting a finger on the map as she says uh, really understanding where are you right now in your journey are you in the green zone which can be like you know your comfort zone are you in the yellow so which is uh, slightly before the red zone and the red zone is this you know traumatizing zone so basically sometimes what we do and i realized also with her that um, uh, very often sometimes we put ourselves in a situation like you know crashing your comfort zone where we're shooting into the red zone what happens with that is very often we traumatize ourselves even more because it was so much out of our comfort zone <laughs> that we're not going there any more close and maybe in a couple of years we are ready to open up the subject um, but what's the important thing is because in Tantra um, and many other philosophies about expansion is really expanding to all experiences that you can possibly have and also fear or the things that you don't know or not aware of is part of this game so um, the idea was to check where am I right now am I like you know if you see the circles surrounding each other like similar like the why how what from Simon Sinek's the inner piece is the green one then yellow then red where am I am I green or am I already on the edge of yellow to red am I already totally somewhere out of there check where you are right now and then see what in this context right now really helps you and um, to progress not to traumatize you because that's not the point of, of uh, going to your fears but some small steps that you can do in order to to go there and again it might be having an honest authentic conversation with your partner about i don't know sexuality or generally feelings or or 
um, how less uh, how somebody cooked maybe you know and that was also something like many years ago a challenge to really say like you know even the small things can I openly say to a friend like what you cooked was not good because I was afraid to be rejected or maybe to hurt somebody else all the small things um, can be actually uh helpful to look at but also to to larger parts uh, deciding on um, a project in your business or working with a client where again uh, it's more about um, it scares you but you know it's the right thing so are you doing the next step so you don't need to figure out everything right now in the moment but if you feel this courage this love that we're talking also about in the workshop if you can take a decision from there again not traumatizing you really helping you to progress then you definitely flow way more uh, with life Nice. Um, you briefly just mentioned sexuality, and I know that's um, a topic that you're passionate about and something you teach as well. How did you get into that? Um, how did I get into that? <laughs> right now, I realize that um, whenever we speak about personal growth and we do not speak about sexuality, we're excluding a huge part of that because we are basically sexual beings. Mm -hmm. And um, how I got into that was um, through my teachers and mentors. First contact maybe was yoga somehow. So um, somewhere at the back you heard about Tantra. I associated it with, you know, only having sex, nothing spiritual or or in, in this direction. Then uh, more and more I learned about conscious sexuality, working with uh, sexual energy, went to different festivals. Um, East is one organization, then... Um, in, in Southeast Asia, there are different teachers that uh, can bring you further there. And I started reading about that. I just started getting fascinated. And me and my partner both were kind of interested into this topic and start going together also uh, in this direction. And yeah, so maybe that's like, um, I never really reflected that way, like when did it really start? It just sparked my interest. And okay. I feel there's a lot of potential in general yeah. there. You just said that when we talk about personal growth, you, you should never ignore sexuality. Yeah. And sexuality is something that I maybe briefly have touched on in this podcast, but basically have probably avoided because it's a very intimate topic. It's actually an area that I want to develop in more now in the future because I notice myself sometimes ignoring that side of myself. Can you explain more about what you mean that we're sexual beings and we shouldn't ignore that and how it affects the rest of our lives? Yeah, so first, first what you say, like, I think I am, what I discovered in my 20s and the role that I'm playing right now is that I love these intimate topics because they're, I think, that have a transformative correct, uh, character. So sexuality, the female cycle, psychedelics, anything which can help us to elevate human consciousness. And again, I'm still on my journey. So I still have my moments, like, you know, where, like, out of my comfort zone. And I depends yeah. on who you meet, right? What's the reference point? And then the other people who are so open or whatever you think uh, like how they speak and talk and play and I'm like oh my god I'm totally in my box still. <laughs> so it always depends who you meet um, but uh, what I mean by that if um, so because I also work very closely with women and specifically in the female cycle um, aspect sexuality is equally connected to the female cycle because mm. if you think of it why we have the female cycle or why we bleed each month is because uh, we are not uh, uh, not pregnant and there is uh, there is a process going on which is helping us to, to cleanse, if you put it in very simple words. Um, so our whole chemical emotional rhythm is about uh, life creation and, and um, feeling the sex drive. So very often, um, because we have conditioned ourselves not to talk about it, it's an uncomfortable topic, but... Um, I met a lot of women, for instance, who have no relationship to their vagina at all, like literally not seeing that as part of them, either because of some experiences um, or just shame or whatever is there. But if you think of it from a perspective, it's just another body part on a physiological level, like everything else, like your eye, like your nose, your shoulder, mm -hmm. and it needs the same care and attention as everything else. So what happens with a muscle or with an area which you neglect maybe over years and years? 
first of all, physiologically and the PC muscle, which is kind of this hammock shaped muscle in our body, mm-hmm. is one of the most neglected muscles in our entire body. We only notice it usually as women after pregnancy or when we're getting older, how fucking important this muscle were. I'm not even sure if I can swear on this podcast. So I Yeah, I know you can. I, I okay. swear in my intro. I'm like, oh, all okay, the fuck okay, ups okay. and learnings. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Okay. So on the physiological level, it plays already a huge role. Um, in terms of your health and well-being just as a basis number two um, is if you look at the reptilian reptilian brain and the new parts of the brain in its core we are still animals and animals have very strong needs and drives and one of them is a sexual drive Mm -hmm. so if we're coming from this perspective we we understand that a part of us is there is an animal that wants to scream that wants to play that wants to be to be uh, released in a certain way Mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that you go out there and play like a monkey on the streets but it means that there is a certain need that needs to be met within your being and in um to put it um in the very abstract terms now there is something which is called the vertical vertical integration which is basically if you look at chakras and we have different chakras and you might um, think about whatever you like but basically the idea is to integrate the animal part of you the root chakras which is connecting to the earth which is making you this um uh, this animal um, animalistic the animalistic part of you to the upper parts which is when we talk about transcending our ego and detaching from from material stuff both parts are equally important and that's only harmony can create if we integrate it both it doesn't mean that you need to do certain things there is no right and wrong direction that you need to be poly or monogamous or uh, masturbate in a certain way it just means that you need to bring conscious awareness because it's such a important part of your life and to, to make it um, maybe a confused already everyone and you yourself uh, <laughs> uh, yourself as well um, but uh, I think just working with consciously with this energy with the sexual energy that you definitely have uh, for creativity for really directing into manifestation for healing for love for it's really powerful and that's why like if you look into yoga into tantra into Tao principles and very different traditions they're all speaking about the same stuff about really consciously learning how to direct and transmute um, sexual energy mm-hmm. so that's for me when I, when I say like it's part of the personal development that we don't talk about and usually no one knows and i'm still again not knowing anything i'm just wanting to share whatever i came across within my uh, last couple of years yeah i feel like it's such a huge topic and we could probably talk all day just about this topic (laughs) but i do totally agree with the fact that we just need to become aware and definitely i feel like just because there's so much shame around this topic of private parts, vagina. See, I'm even reluctant to say the word. Mm. Um, that sometimes I don't, I definitely wouldn't see that part of my body as equal to my arm or something like that, which is super weird. And I'm actually very much interested in the female cycle. When we first met, we kind of talked about all that stuff because... I used to work at a company that had a natural contraceptive app. I learned so much about the whole cycle. I was just mind blown. It all started with my story of stopping to take the pill. And I was just amazed at how little I knew about my body. I just didn't know. I didn't know you could only get pregnant on one day. I didn't know so many things. And I and I knew that so many other people were the same. And now I'm actually very, very consciously aware of my cycle and how it affects Beautiful. It affects me. Um, but I am still learning. And, and there's areas of that that I really want to explore more of. Um, something you talked about before is natural flow, I think you call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've heard you talking about... An, on another podcast i'm super interested to hear more about this um basically what is it and how can we learn to use it Mm -hmm. so um short side note into this to Mm -hmm. give context to the audience on my um on my journey in southeast asia i met a doula which is basically like a midwife or i call it a spiritual midwife and she introduced me to this practice and back then 
me and it was like a, a huge a huge room of um, uh, men and women from across uh, the world and all different ages and backgrounds none of us had ever ever heard about this and I was so stunned and I just felt like you know curiosity you know when you have this feeling like intuitive drive that there is something there but you have no freaking idea why you're doing this what is doing that you just feel it's right so I followed her I was her uh, first Skype students um, the, I mean it was very short and I started to practicing it myself and basically what it means is having a period without any products without any tampons pets or cups or whatever we have but learning how to um to align to the natural rhythm of our body. So when we think about our uh, bleeding experience throughout the month or uh, in the month, um, we usually see only the end result, which is the tampon, which is full, or the, the pad, which is mm. full, etc. But we don't really pay conscious attention to when the blood is coming out. So what I discovered for myself and again um, with other women that I talk to who have practiced it also on by themselves is that there is a rhythm to the bleeding so it doesn't um, come out like um, uh, so it doesn't drip the whole time it doesn't matter yeah. you got the picture everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so it comes actually in waves and you can become consciously aware of these waves um, so do you sorry to hook in go here, but but do you just com become aware of that or do you actually control it with like your pelvic I mean I'm totally new to, to this topic and I'm presuming most of the listeners as well like this is insane we're all using tampons we're all mo at least using a cup and I have actually I've actually kind of I'm very intuitive so this stuff kind of I've actually kind of stopped because I knew that tampons weren't doing very well but then I started wearing you know the the underpants with the yeah. lining um dear kate i i think i have and um yeah so how how do you even go about so it so i love this word control because it fits perfectly in what yeah. sort of, uh, <laughs> into what we said before so uh and it's one of the most asked question actually um by others so to put it very simply um it's not again who wants to control what usually it's the mind who wants to figure out a b c and then i make you my body bleed when i tell you so again we're tra trying to create harmony between our body and mind because usually what happens is because we ignore our body's nature we dominate kind of the mind what it needs so if we would basically as you said you're very intuitive slow down this is what the body is doing like mm. it's bleeding if we would just take care of ourselves keep warmth uh maybe honor honor um honor our flow not with the first oh my god i'm again on my period this yeah. will fuck up my my um my holidays plans. or yeah. plans <laughs> i mean react i mean you're talking to yourself to your mind to your subconscious this is how you program yourself month by month so if we really take the time to connect to that and again without the expectation that we want to control anything but basically to as if you're holding space for a good friend right so you start to dance with that and it's um so this is how i see it like in a good dance like um, one is taking the lead and then you're playing taking the lead. There is no one person who is uh, like radically leading you there. Both parts have to play. So a certain level, um, you don't control it, but you kind of realize what your rhythm is and you can start negotiating and playing around a bit, like talking to your subconscious, to your mind, like, you know, okay, can you maybe hold for half an hour because I'm still in a meeting or I'm doing something there. So there is a certain... Um, a certain way of communication the con communication to the body is not only one way um it's both ways um our minds for example if we speak think about that mm -hmm. uh, if we not speak if we sleep um have you ever dreamt of a toilet or something like this <laughs> i don't know i've dreamt of a lot of weird things lately but... okay so let's say you would dream of a toilet and maybe <laughs> some of the of the audience have dreamt about the toilet but what is your body or mind telling you with that it's I telling need to you go to the toilet. exactly so you're still okay, not yeah, in control and conscious but it finds a way to communicate to you and this can be in pictures it can be in f uh, physically it can be emotionally it can be a certain feeling which you have but basically you're learning a new language of the body and starting to come in a dual communication with the body mm. and support your body and not trying to again mind trying to dominate the body but you're just equal both parts uh, doing um, doing their job and playing around but I still think it's very 
much you wouldn't know how to and especially the question would probably come up yeah but what if you're me- you're in a meeting like you already yeah, mentioned nope. and then all of a sudden i mean you just have a pants full of blood I yeah. Mean, yeah so one thing that i tell women so basically there you do need some time to explore your rhythm so yeah. maybe your first day is not as the last uh, last day and one big trap that we're generally falling as women it comes at the female cycle but all other person development things that i'm uh, i'm doing as well is about as i call it the perfection trap so if we're starting something we believe only free bleeding intuitive bleeding conscious release or natural flow as i call it is only correct if i manage from the first moment of the blood until the last one who is telling you that i mean like there are no rules Hmm. whatever source you have so if you're in a meeting or maybe traveling somewhere nobody's forcing you to do anything it's just an invitation to create a more conscious um, way with your body right now for me like i'm honestly taking time off because i know if i invest in this couple of days in myself my the rest of my months is totally different there's my energy my my physiological uh, body and it's really a time of release not only physical release but emotional release where you can really reflect what is there from the last month that they can let go of which is not serving me anymore whatever works i know women who are doing it only at night others who are doing it only on the first day others only on the last days um others have no problems traveling to uh, on a long term flight to indonesia others have uh, difficulties with other situations and it's all fine and there is no end goal to reach the only thing is about focus on the how not on the what if you want to learn more about how how to do that where can you go so one thing that you can do is to go to my website, either of my personal one, aliceresino.com or femflow.com slash natural flow. So I was giving different workshops and still do in that form. But right now I have an online program, actually the first one um, that I'm aware of, which is taking you step by step of how to create this connection and uh, learn this method. Um, because I couldn't find it anywhere. And I just wanted to, mm-hmm. to offer this as opportunity for others. Amazing. Um, I want to loop it back to the whole fear topic because i guess we got a bit off track but um so many uh, cool topics i know (laughs) oh my god um last topic before we get into our our finishing questions is the topic of being present because one of the major things that i look up to you for is i feel like you're a very very present person and when we were doing the workshop and afterwards i came up to you and i said alisa you're you were so 100 percent there and you were nowhere else and it's something that i i struggle with very much now especially with phones social media all of the distractions i find it quite hard to be in the moment and just be okay with where i'm at i'm also a very future oriented person i'm always worrying about what's life bringing next and planning and yeah, I'm I'm very obsessed about, about future things and I'm trying to act, actively work against that right now. So my my question is what are your tips on being more present and being right here and yeah. Um beautiful topic and also as a side note I'm also more I, I like right now the last couple of months if ever like I'm also very future oriented like you know plants and this and mm. and so it's always a continuous practice to bring yourself to the present moment so one tip is to give up this idea which I had quite honestly speaking that if you learn some something or you come to this um quotation marks or how you ever to come to enlightening moments then you are always present you're always here no your mind has a nature your body has a nature Mm. it's about the practice of bringing yourself back back. Mm. it's not that you know you reach a certain level and will stay forever it's a continuous practice of returning to the present moment and here and here and here and as the word already says it comes with practice so tip number two is to develop a regular practice which will help you to develop this the skill because again it's um, first of all, I think if you cannot master the present moment, you cannot master business or life, honestly. Like this is the number one top skill. I think that anyone, any leader, any person who wants to have deaf relationship or connection to itself needs to develop. And this can be trained. This is not something which is out there. Um, meditation can be a beautiful tool. Meditation practice, get an app, uh, 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 get, uh, basically you just need to sit down for five minutes in a row, make a, 
I remember when I started yoga, which is another tool that you can can help you to connect to the present moment because you're really emerged into doing the asanas and the practice. I did the 50 days yoga challenge just to get myself into the habit of doing everyday yoga and not doing it maybe once a week. Again, it's cool to, it's like going to the gym. If you go once a week, it's cool, but does it really get you the apps or whatever you you wish for from the gym? Not really. So um, try to start somewhere. It's a good start, but then increase a bit the continuity until it not only becomes like a daily habit practice that you do in the morning or in the evening as part of your ritual, but just generally a lifestyle, the way how you approach everything. And slowly you will increase if you have a regular practice. Mm. Yeah. What I also really liked uh, that you mentioned is just putting your hand on your chest yeah. and just connecting. I find myself doing this sometimes in the, in the in the underground and I'm like, okay, I'm just touching my chest. But I think it's a really quick way to just connect back into the moment. Yes, thank you for saying this. I noticed you do, did it during the podcast yeah. as well and I immediately did it myself. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Um, we talked about a lot, uh, Lisa, and we could go on for days, but it's time to wrap up. Um, if you could go back to your 20 year old self who's sitting in a restaurant and and maybe a sushi restaurant or in a, a Chinese restaurant and gets a fortune cookie, what's if you could go back to her, what's the one thing you could tell her? My back then 20 something, right? Honestly, the first thing that comes up to my mind is um, just trust. Trust that everything happens the way it happens and should happen. And just um, trust the universe or higher self, your spirit, however you want to call it, but learn to trust and trust yourself. That's beautiful. This is always my favorite part because such honest answers come up. Um, did you have anything you would do differently in your 20s any fuck up or regret um people always say i don't have any regrets but is there anything you would have maybe done differently yes um so yes in the context of depending how you look at regrets everything brought you to the moment you're right now but in generally i was a very heavy smoker i smoked one to two packages a day still until i was 23 so and i started when i was 14 so I regret the, the smoking part because it's a huge impact on your body. Um, I would have loved uh, probably to um, to quit my bachelor studies way earlier because at some certain point I realized um, it's I love the business aspect and I uh, connected and uh, through HR and all everything that I learned there, but. I always felt like I want, like why I'm doing the studies. I'm doing it not to have a certification, but to really, um, to really learn something and grow something. But I didn't have the courage to do it because I felt like if I'm not doing a bachelor, I will never succeed. Which then I did with the masters because I did the masters in social, social ecological economics and policy. But I have not handed in the final paper, so I have no master's degree because my initial thought was to just learn it was never intention to finish it but it was first decision from a place of courage but i wish i would have done it with the bachelor way earlier and just jump into this coaching path way earlier and not um, being so hesitant about that i'm too young or don't know shit and who will ever listen to me yeah how old do you know 30 oh exactly 30 yes <laughs> Just at the cusp of exactly. <laughs> um, do you have any book recommendations? Any books that really changed your whole perspective on life, or yeah, everything? Mm -hmm. So, couple of things. If you go to my Instagram account, I puts like I usually puts a year really recommendations, book recommendations. Mm -hmm. But um, the power of now from Eckhart Tolle. I think this is something you can read. Oh, Ali just that. mentioned that in yeah. my last interview, and I'm. This is literally the next book I need to read. Beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like something, um, audio version, reading, anything to that. Then Homo sapiens is definitely one that gives you a really good perspective of what a human being actually is. is. And um, let me think, uh, Rice, Sister Rice. So to approach also the female empowerment part, but um, book of connecting to your feminine, to sisterhood and to starting a bit more your journey as a woman um, more consciously. Nice. And where can people find you? Do you have anything coming up? Um, yeah. 
where can people follow your journey from here on out? Um, where can people find me? Uh, probably if you type in my name at every platform that you find, but as I mentioned before, at my website, aliceeresino.com and um, uh, at, Ali at Alisa Eresina on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. So yeah. I'll pop it all in the show notes. Thank you. Thanks so much, <laughs> Elisa, for joining the Course Life Living podcast. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And I shall be following your journey and all the listeners as well. Thank you so much, Joseph, from my <laughs> side. You're a beautiful soul. And I just simply enjoyed this podcast and talking to you and connecting more in depth with you. Aww, so thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was an absolute joy to talk to Alisa. And before you exit out, um, I have a goodie for you, as promised in the beginning. Alisa was so kind to share actually a discount code for all of you lovely listeners on her natural flow program where you can tap into your female cycle and get to know how you can actually stop using period products. And I am definitely going to be learning through that i'm super pumped and excited so the discount code is hashtag you matter 50 and you enter that into femflow.org forward slash natural flow and that gives you 50 euros off which is so generous so thank you to elisa for sharing that with the course life living community very happy and would love to hear what you think of the course um of course of the episode as well hop on over to instagram under at quarter life living podcast and let me know what you think or drop me a review and now i would like to share a couple of thoughts on the episode so first of all um one profound thing that elisa said was fear is like a compass for my biggest growth potential and I find this to be so true because basically the best things in life that have come to me were behind fear, I guess. Like starting my business, probably starting this podcast as well, moving abroad, quite a few things. Oh, I recently did a talk on the stage as well. Well, now it was a couple of months ago, but I was so scared when I was asked. 150 people in the audience and I was like, this is so out of my comfort zone. I'm so scared to do it, but I have to do it anyway because I will learn and grow from it. And after it, I was very happy it was over, but um, it was amazing because about two or three people came up to me afterwards and said you know that was so inspiring and I could see myself like in your story and I'm in a similar situation and like hearing that is just amazing I went towards my fear to overcome it and I definitely am not as scared of public speaking as I was but I still have a fair way to go to be comfortable with it also that we're animal beings and sexual beings and it's kind of a call for me to explore more of that side of me and not to be so prude, I guess, about that whole thing and to talk more openly about it, but also just to learn more about what you can do or how you can tap into your sexuality and not ignore. Because sometimes I find I... I had a conversation actually with my partner about this. Sometimes I ignore that side of myself I think because of something that happened when I was younger, like I was judged because of my body. And also this stereotypical thinking of you don't want someone to just judge you by your looks, but you also want them to kind of, yeah, to judge you on your intelligence. So I find those conflicting thoughts within me. So this is definitely... A call from this interview to explore more of that area and to talk openly about it and to embrace that side of myself and also that it's just a natural we're animal beings that's what we yeah we, you, we kind of forget that in the end actually we're just animals and we <laughs> we function like animals and it's just a natural drive also, I mean mind blowing is what uh, Elisa started telling us about period products just super exciting topic about getting rid of period products in your life 
for one reason, because of sustainability reasons. You might have listened to the episode on being imperfectly sustainable. Definitely a topic that our generation is, or everyone basically, because it's so predominant in the news now, is kind of worried about. And period products actually produce an incredible amount of waste. So that would be a perfect reason to actually try and learn to use less or even no period products. And I, I've i been tracking my cycle for quite some time or at least I, now I even know my cycle very well without tracking it. So if you want to hear more about that, you can go back and listen to the episode. But I'm very excited to learn more about the female cycle and not using period products. As I mentioned in the episode, I actually use um, period panties, which are like double or triply lined so you can kind of use them i i can only use them when i have light period when it's like starting or ending but apparently there's new and thicker ones out and other brands like things and stuff but absolutely love this idea because um tampons also tend to cause yeast infections and stuff like that and um, are bleached often so a lot of chemicals in them as well so very very interesting which is also bad for your health and stuff but I won't go too much into this now other than that I don't have any major updates on my side I'm back in Vienna back to work working with a lot of clients so if you don't know me I run my own content marketing and copywriting business so if you ever want to produce a podcast or write some copy head on over to sayitright.at and I can take care of that for you just started with new clients very excited very busy before Christmas and I hope you're having a lovely November so far Oh, it was also my birthday. I turned 27. Yes. Hop on over to Instagram to hear more about my thoughts on that. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. I hope you enjoyed the episode and um, I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.